Hello my friends and welcome to Crossout. This here is the ultimate tutorial on how to play Clan Wars. I originally planned making this only for Patreon but then I thought that maybe I should do something really good for YouTube so if you enjoy this video and if you find it useful then please do consider supporting me on Patreon. It will be great help indeed. And special thanks to these people who are already supporting me on Patreon so Thanks again guys! So the first thing is composition. This means which builds work together and which builds don't work together. This is actually the first thing, not the composition. Let's uh, make one thing clear before I start. You don't need relic weapons to play clan wars. A lot of people think that you need relic weapons, but you really don't. So I'm gonna cover this in the build section, but first like I said, the composition. So if you have like a spider tank, then you can't expect to have like three uh, melee builds in your team and one spider tank and uh, expect to win. I mean, sure, miracles happen, but uh, this is something you don't really want to do. So I'm going to show you some good compositions that work together pretty well. So if you're a hover or you're a melee, then two melees and two hovers works really great. Or also free melees and one hover, that also works. Uh, free hovers and one melee, it might work, but I think the most effective uh, composition is two uh, melees and two hovers. That is of course if you want to play hovers and melees. However, for melees, these kind of, you know, hybrid builds with some uh, lances, harvester and a spark, uh, four of those that uh, also works uh, great, but then again, if you go against uh, like some uh, counter composition like uh, spiders or porcupines, then you pretty much stand zero chance. So that's why you need a hover or maybe two in a team to deal some damage from the range. And not just any hovers, but something that can stay a little bit, you know, at distance. Uh, Helios would probably work also. You probably think that Mandrake will never work in Clan Wars, especially this kind of small Mandrake, but actually it does work. We have actually played this composition a lot, that we have one double Mandrake that can do uh, damage to the campers, and that Mandrake is protected by three heavy builds. Heavy builds can be anything uh, that is heavy, something with, you know, like, uh, like a spider with meat grinder, uh, this protects against the melees, that's really good, you know, against the melees. Porcupines, they do great job against the melees, they just uh, wreck them absolutely into pieces. But if you have like three heavy builds, then the enemy, they can't engage you from the distance, because the Mandrake, he can obviously shoot behind, the, you know, the hills, and one hit against the hover from a Harpy Mandrake, 12 Harpy Mandrake, and that hover will be in pieces. So that's where a Mandrake is a good uh, choice. There are also options to have a Porcupine Mandrake, one uh, Mandrake, two Porcupines, this is also good. And then you can have three like heavy builds and maybe even one hover, that also works, it's not too bad. Because then the Mandrake can uh, protect himself with the Porcupines. And of course, Capcans are also very good against uh, all kind of rush-in builds. And if you're thinking about four hover builds, if you want to play something like this, like uh, Scorps, Typhoons, and maybe another Typhoon or Scorp build, then I would highly recommend that the fourth build would be either double shield Helios or a single shield triple Helios. You're, it's very important to have some build that can deal a lot of DPS, something that can just, you know, do a lot of damage from close range in case uh, you need to push against something, so that's also a good idea. But I would personally not recommend four hovers, because one melee can already cause serious damage. So I have included this list on the screen for you, which compositions work and which don't. So instead of explaining every single build, you know, one by one, I think it's just better to uh, give you a list which compositions are uh, pretty good and which ones don't really work at all. So I hope this list uh, explains everything you need to know about uh, which kind of builds to bring into uh, Clan Wars. Or well, not builds, but uh, like I said, the composition, that means the mix of builds. So, next one in the list is uh, builds. You might first ask, uh, how does a Clan Wars build differ from the PvP build? Well, my builds, they usually don't really, they are kind of, you know, similar. But the only difference is that Clan Wars build has to be as best uh, as 
possible. Which means that uh, get rid of the decor armor if you don't want it. I just realized they both used the same uh, radar and the same uh, spoiler at the back and the same uh, <laughs> same pack almost. <laughs> oh my gosh, man! Even though I didn't intend it this way. So anyway, Clan Wars builds. A lot of people they don't put much back armor at all, like this one. Uh, it doesn't have much back armor at all, as you can see. It has just a little bit in here. Uh, if someone like takes a good shot at me, then they can take out... Uh, yeah, I don't think they can take out all hovers. Maybe with cannons you can, but... Um, it's very important that uh, you have like a good front armor if you're going hover. Because uh, front is where you're gonna take shots at. In Clan Wars there are only four opponents, which means the chance of getting shot in the back is uh, a lot lower than in PvP. So that's the main difference. You have to usually armor your build from the front. Get rid of all the, you know, decor armor and the build can't really look that nice, even though I have tried, but well, yeah, that's the difference, guys, that's the difference, so. I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, good Clan Wars builds. This one doesn't have radar armor, but it can take about the same amount of shots in the front and uh, ones that have lots of radars. However, this is not as effective against uh, Scorpions as the radar builds, but still, it's pretty effective. I can take out I can take out like a lot of you know radar uh, platform uh, hover builds with this one if I go one v one with them so it's not a big difference to be honest. Also I use fuel tank I have it uh, somewhere in here, but if you don't want the fuel then you can take it off you can put some uh, plows or something in there. And also I recommend for Clan Wars hovers you should put some plows somewhere at the bottom. I actually explained about this build on Patreon what the is and what isn't so you can check out more if you want. It's on Patreon this uh, build and how to build it. But this is like a general stuff about this so this is a good build for Clan Wars. Works pretty well if you're going uh, hover and uh, icebox cabin with either typhoons or tsunamis. Next up I have uh, another Hover Typhoon with uh, Echo Cabin. This also works with Tsunamis. It's not that great, but I mean it does work with Tsunamis. Uh, whatever you do, don't put Executioners or any other cannons on it. That's never gonna work, guys. I mean obviously it works, but it's not gonna, you know, be efficient enough to actually face the other ones. So this one is also pretty good Clan Wars build. It has a small plow in here in case the Harvester tries to grind my frame off or something. Again, this is on Patreon if you want more details about this build. This one uses Echo Cabin, which gives the reload speed, and also it uses the Oppressor Engine. Actually, so did the other one, but uh, yeah. The idea of this is to more like, you know, go in your face, and that's also why, in the front, if all this gets shot off, I still have two hovers, even these can go out. Two hovers behind the cabin, which still allows me to fly and still do some damage. Then I have my latest uh, hover scorpion build with a ghost cabin. With scorpions you have a lot of cabin choices actually. I prefer ghost because it's uh, lighter, it's smaller, it has 12 energy and it. Uh, if you cloak then it has 15% damage boost. If you've been cloaked uh, 15, uh, I mean 10 seconds that gives you 15% damage boost and that actually is a lot. Again, I don't have much back armor. I do have five hovers in the back just for the tonnage. I don't actually need that many. You could have less, but um, yeah. Also, this one uses fuel tank. It uses Colossus engine instead of oppressor because it's not as heavy as the other ones. So that's why I use the Colossus. Also, this one has a neutrino scope on it. You might think that uh, you could use this for like uh, Oculus or something else, but uh, it's actually very good because it highlights the enemies and sometimes you don't see the enemy name tag from distance like um, if you turn like this see I can already see something in there and yeah well there's an invisible hitbox but uh, very often it's very useful the neutrino scope with scorps it's actually really good and also the explosives obviously it highlights them so neutrino scope don't underestimate it guys it's actually very good so you can make the really good shots with it and main uh, difference maker is that it highlights the builds and it can really make a difference from the uh, distance. It just highlights these really really tiny spots you know when someone is like peeking like somewhere there. Yeah but the cannons are sparkling not that it matters much but I think one lost the cannon not sure. Then you can sometimes just hit like uh, somebody's hover or somebody's lance or gun or whatever is poking out. 
And here's also my old Helios hover, which works uh, great for clan wars. It's a little bit different design than most people, but then again, most people, they just rip it off from exhibition, but I built mine right from the scratch. So it has these hovers on the side to add uh, more side protection and also I don't know why people put like these hovers, they put them in front of the cabin, like I don't know what the point in that is, it's absolutely, you know, useless, you don't need that garbage at all, you can just put the uh, hovers right on the side, so if someone shoots you in the front you don't lose any hovers at all, and if someone shoots you on the side then it actually acts uh, as an armor. So this Helios hover, pretty well uh, protected, it's also 8 kills confirmed Helios hover, that was in PvP but still. Uh, again, I'm using fuel tank on almost all of my builds, so you can take it off, you can replace it with something else, maybe add more uh, protection underneath, maybe two plows, something like this, just against the melees, but in general this works great. And of course Helios Hover is useless without the Aegis Shield. You must have at least one. Without the shield it's absolutely useless in Clan Wars, so don't even try. And finally I'm getting to the Cricket Hover, which is probably one of the cheapest uh, Clan Wars capable build. You only need the Apollo Generator, that's the only uh, legendary uh, item you need for this build. Crickets are epic, as you know, very easy to get them. And of course you need a cloak, I don't even know where the cloak is, here, that's where the cloak is. And yeah, you need this too, the heart red engine. So heart red, cloak, and free crickets. If you don't have the Apollo, then don't even bother taking it into clan wars, because the idea of a cricket hover is to have cloak. If you don't have cloak, it's never gonna work, so just give up on it, just grind a little bit more, get yourself a cloak and Apollo and that's when you can do clan wars. And engine is also very important. Without engine, uh, reload speed is uh, reduced by 10. Reload speed for weapons, missiles, modules, turrets and drones increased by 10%. And it doesn't take an, uh, energy either. And it also adds you mass limit. So very important. A cabin on a cricket build, uh, it's like, it doesn't have to be harpy. Harpy just does more splash damage. Uh, Torero is also very good. With Torero you can have two big plows right in here on the side to protect the crickets. Very good design. And I think the cricket placement this kind is uh, pretty good for, you know, grouping and stuff. But then again, if one cannon hit hits you in the middle, you can lose all three of them. So you can put the crickets, you know, like this on side. Well, yeah, this build is not designed for it, but you get it like this, obviously. In the, in the, you know, normal positioning. Uh, I have also made these where the um, cabin is like behind and the crickets are in the front of the cabin. And then you have built like around it. That kind of works, but the aim angles are bad, so I would not recommend it for uh, clan wars. This one is good, but the one that the crickets are in front, it's, it's not good at all. And here is another really cheap uh, clan wars build that also doesn't really require any legendary parts. It uses protectors, it also works with tacklers, but tacklers kinda got nerfed and they are really poopy now, so I would not recommend it. So, Bastion Cabin and four protectors, and then it has some radiators and coolers, I think it has uh, one radiator, one cooler, and then I don't remember, oh yeah, the Colossus engine for the tonnage, so. This build, I actually took it in the Clan Wars, it was uh, quite long ago when I was crafting the Typhoons, so I didn't have Tsunamis, and this is what I used. It can tank pretty much against anything. Against Hovers, it's absolutely useless, because the Hovers just uh, keep shooting you from the distance, and you just don't have enough DPS from the range to actually do anything. But against Melees, against the Spiders, it's really good build. Yeah, if you remove Apollo, and maybe use a gas generator, then Apollo, look at the weight of Apollo, it's really really heavy, it's over one ton, and I think the gas gen is only like 200 kilos or something. So technically, yeah, you could remove the Colossus and you could remove the generator and put the hot red on and gas gen, and maybe you lose five or 600 kilos of armor, which is pretty much like uh, one of these um, medium plows. I don't even have the medium ones, but uh, but yeah, basically you can have this build with a gas generator, so just epic weapons, and it is Clan Wars capable. I don't have any melee builds uh, myself at the moment, and I don't like playing melees, but this is like kind of, you know, s uh, semi-meta build, I would say. 
the lances are to deal uh, as much damage at the, you know, the impact as possible. Like, let's try to take this build out. And also with a melee, obviously, you need good speed and stuff, but I will talk about it next. So, this is like the build. See, you do a lot of damage with that, and then you have the spark, and then you can pretty much spark it, you know. Yeah, that build is pretty much disabled. If you get a hit like this, then, then pretty much one. And the generator, see at the back, it's on the rift module. Come on, stop moving. You press that, and it drops the generator, which, uh, you know drops the generator so if someone tries to shoot you in the generator then there is no more generator it's only used for the lances so once you use a couple of lances then you can drop the generator and then your build is lighter and faster and less dangerous you know against uh, scorps and stuff and if you're talking about relics then uh, this kind of build is also very good it's the blight cap with uh, two uh, fire bugs but you need relics this build is actually really Good. I have to give you that these kind of builds not this specific build but similar ones So this kind of build I think it can take this out. I might actually try this just for uh, just for the fun If I'll enable that let's see how much damage it does like this Right now it won't really be able to shoot me so you just keep pushing it like this Okay, yeah, it got stuck somewhere and then yeah well, let's say this is the first attack you can do, and look at that, that's already burning, so... Little bit more from the side, and there it goes. I did take the Bastion Cabin right from the front. But yeah, these small builds, they are really effective. They also work pretty well against the Hovars. They do so much damage with the Firebox and the Blight Cabin, it's just unbelievable. And if you're asking what kind of modules you should have on your vehicle, well, only one teammate needs a radar detector, really. It's usually me because I'm playing the icebox so I can't have a cap gun on it. I have it in the front because it uh, has a lot of, you know, structure. Radar detector has 431. And also if you can upgrade it for the range, that's even better. So you can see the enemy is pretty much across the entire map. And of course cloak is very important for a cannon uh, build, any cannon build really. Some of them do use a porcupine in the front instead. They use like uh, two cannons and a porcupine and pretty much nothing else because they don't have the energy for it. However, if your teammates already have a radar detector, then you should use a cap can. I don't know what the hell this build is. I just uh, took a random from our exhibition to show you, but uh, this is a very bad design because the cap can uh, goes in the front. You don't want to do that. You don't want the cap can in the front. And that's because uh, Capcan is against the melees and stuff that push in. And if the melee is right in your face, then most of the time what happens is that you can't even shoot the Capcan. Well, in this one I think you can, but the spark can still uh, disable the Capcan. So you always want to put the Capcan uh, behind, that it shoots behind. And also the tsunamis or cannons, they should always be on separate buttons. One button is always a bad idea. If you have them on separate buttons, then you can shoot one and then you can shoot other. And that's extremely ex uh, useful against cloaked enemies. If someone cloaks right, right there behind the corner, you can see it on the radar that they cloak. Then with this, you can only predict once and that's it. But if you have them on separate buttons, you can take one shot and then wait like maybe a second and take another one and make it more difficult for the enemy to uh, take a big shot at you. But I just want to explain that Capcan is very useful. This is like the generic, you know, layout of a good spider build. Like you have uh, some side armor, you have lots of front armor, and then the tsunamis are like almost uh, leveled with a cabin. I think they could be one block even lower. I think mine had it one lower. I don't really remember. For example, this is a really bad clan wars build. First of all, the cannons are really, really in the front, which makes them uh, really, you know, exposed. You can lose the cannons very fast. The gap between all the legs is too big, which means if someone shoots you from this side, right where the cap can is, see? Then they can take out your entire frame and your back end is gonna be exposed. Also, there is almost no spaced armor at the back. There is too much armor in the back in general and the spaced armor around the guns, it's pretty much garbage. So this, this is not a good build at all. I just wanted to mention it that this is something you don't want to take in Clan Wars. And of course, this is my 8 kills confirmed Hammerfall build, which is really good in PvP, but unfortunately in Clan Wars, it is laughable. Don't take Hammerfalls in a Clan Wars, they are absolutely useless. You're gonna lose your guns in like 2 seconds, 
anything can pretty much shoot your guns out and trust me most people in clan wars they usually hit you if you just go out with a shotgun build even if you go with a spider build or like a hover build they will get one shot off and most likely both of your guns are gonna be gone so even with breakers don't go in the clan wars with them they do good damage yes if you can backstab someone but that chance is just too small pulsars they also work pretty well in clan wars this is also actually clan wars capable build it's really well designed this build it uses the oculus instead of radar detector but like I said, the modules, it depends what kind of, you know, modules your teammates have. So if one of the teammates has already radar detector, then the others should uh, utilize that energy for something else. Either Capcan, Oculus, depending on the build what you're playing. But I'm going to put the list of uh, good and bad builds on the screen so you can see which builds work in Clan Wars and which don't. I hope you find this list uh, useful and you don't try to go into Clan Wars with some bad builds i mean some of them do work like for example like a mammoth spider it can work in clan wars but uh, for that you need this kind of a uh, defense build something like with porcupines or mandrakes so you force the enemy to push into you and then you can use the mammoths to do damage because if you go against like a tsunami typhoon or scorp or something like this with mammoths then you are pretty much useless next up tactics this part has um, two like so-called sub points or sub parts one of them is know your build and how to play your specific build for example pulsar you don't really want to stay that far from the enemy because it's very easy to touch the pulsars maybe not with a spider build but it is easy to touch the pulsars so you don't really want to be that far however if it comes to that and if you are that far let's say that the enemy is mm, there let's say the enemy is peeking that corner so with what what you want to do with pulsars is shoot one of them wait 50% reload shoot other one shoot this one shoot this one just keep clicking and this is a really good tactic uh, to prevent the enemy from peeking and if he does peek he's gonna get hit the pulsars also uh, do more damage uh, from distance so you can do like a really good hit if you just keep spamming like the corner like this so this is a really good tactic, which also means uh, you need more ammo on your build. Uh, pulsars work great with the echo cabin because of the reload speed. It's like if you start shooting at someone, whoops, wrong button, then you just uh, unload. You can shoot probably like two or three times, uh, two and a half times with the reload speed. So in your face build, that's what I call it. But this is about like, uh, like I said, know your build, how to play it, what's your build's uh, strengths and what your build uh, can't go against. For example, this build, not good against the melees, because obviously it's a hover. They can just take you out of the sky. And from range, you're also pretty bad against like scorpions, typhoons, tsunamis, and that's about it, I would say. Uh, crickets, they can also do some damage for you. I mean, scorpions should be obvious how to play your build. Stay as far as possible and do good shots into like frames or explosives or whatever you can shoot at. If you see something like this, take a whack at it. Yeah, I know it popped up because of the driver thing. And that also brings me to the driver. Know which driver to use. Just look through the perks. I'm not going to really explain this, but uh, just know your, you know, stuff. See? That's how you destroy a hover with uh, Scorps. Try, try to stay as far as possible, take these peak shots, you know, and things like that. Actually, I will go through the driver list real quick and explain which drivers are uh, good and which ones are not. So, uh, first of all, let's start from the bottom this time. Misty, this is actually good for uh, fire weapons, like firebox, dracos, everything like this. If you're going with melee, yes, it does uh, affect the melees, as you can see in here. And it also, uh, with, you know, it's just incinerator. And skinner, but I think this is only good with uh, fire weapons. That brings me to bulldog, which is definitely a melee one. It uh, helps with uh, well, melee weapons uh, damage and melee weapons uh, durability so definitely good with melees a uh, jade it's good with energy weapons this is a uh, very good for helios hovers and also pulsar hovers it's amazing driver for that it basically i don't know why jade is so powerful 
For example, Jay uh, gives you energy weapon damage, energy weapon durability, generator explosion damage reduced, that doesn't really save you, but yeah. A generator mass reduced by 10, this is very good on a bullet generator. I think it gives about 100. 10 uh, kilos extra weight for you, so really good, really good guys. And also with uh, quantum and photon cabins, uh, tonnage 500 uh, kilos. With quantum it's good, but photon cabin it's not really usable in clan wars. I mean you might use like, I don't know, two Helios as one Aurora, but <laughs> I have never seen this. And also it gives you ages, which is basically three things that you use on Helios hover so it helps with everything, definitely for Helios hover guys. But one thing that people don't know is that scorpions are not energy weapons. So don't even try because I already tried and it doesn't affect them. So putting Jade into the, you know, cockpit with uh, scorpions, it doesn't help at all. I use it only to reduce the generator mass because the scorpions don't benefit for, uh, from any of the drivers. Hans, I'm not really sure about. I think Hans is pretty much useless in Clan Wars. I do remember Hans reducing somewhere there was cooldown time with like um, radiators and coolers or something. Radiator efficiency, but I don't see it anymore. I think they removed it. But anyway, last perk might work with Mandrakes. Accuracy 5%. Not much, but... I honestly think that uh, this is better, the Jade's um, level, fif uh, uh, level 15. I don't know, I think Hans is pretty much useless. Stone Death, definitely a cannon driver, there is no doubt in my mind. If you're using cannons, slap the Stone Death in your cabin. Look at that, cannons, 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 cannons. Very good perk. Perseus, this is for machine guns and auto cannons, which is not really used again in Clan Wars. Bulldog already covered it. And Master Jack... Mm, I I don't think this is good choice at all in uh, Clan Wars for any of the you know, vehicles. I mean this level 15 it just give you maximum um, tonnage and maximum mass 500 kilos. That's like generic cabin tonnage and maximum mass. 500 kilos it can actually matter a lot. This means you can put on one of the smaller plows. But then again, I honestly think that the other drivers, if you have a specific build, you benefit f more from another driver than Master Jack. And if you're playing a spider with Capcan, then it's very important to uh, remember that you actually have a Capcan. For example, if you're peeking an enemy, like whichever enemy it is and you're shooting at him, then always try to get him into your Capcan. For example, put one Capcan in here. Like I uh, showed you, I just took a shot, just imagine there is an enemy in there. Then you go back and try to bait him to come to you. Give him like some safe space, like make him feel, you know, comfortable. Like go like here somewhere. And then pretend you're like shooting some enemy somewhere on the other side. Then hopefully the enemy is gonna come around the corner, get capcanned, and then you and your teammates can just unload on him. So this is very important to know how to play uh, your uh, specific build. If you have a Capcan, take advantage of that. Don't just, you know, use it in case of emergency. You should always try to, you know, take advantage of your build's uh, strengths and obviously avoid the weaknesses. This build doesn't have much armor, so it's, you know, not good to go head on with someone. It's good for, you know, against uh, slower spiders. You can touch them. You can shoot them from distance. Again, this build has both cannons and one uh, button, which is not great at all. And also, if you play tsunamis, instead of just itching around, charge your guns. If you don't have to touch the enemy, if there is no point for you to move, then just stand still and take your shots. I have seen a lot of people play Clan Wars in a really stupid way. It's like, let's say that this is an enemy. And that enemy is shooting at someone else. He's not even looking at you. He's shooting like someone in there. Then a lot of people I see, they just do this. They just constantly keep itching around like this. Instead of just standing still, charge your guns and take your shot. 
I can talk all day about uh, specific builds and how to play them, but I really wanted to include the Helios Hover on this video and how to play it and how to counter it. I just see this kind of stupidity in Clan Wars, people don't know how to use the Helios Hover or they don't know how to counter one. So let me explain something, first of all, what what is the strength of this build? Like if you look at it, what is this, not this specific build, I'm talking about the Helios Hover. The specific strength of a Helios Hover is to go in and do a lot of DPS. You go in, you shoot, the enemy turns on you, you pop the shield, they can't do anything, you do more damage and hopefully you can kill them. That is the strength of the Helios Hover. So, however, if you lose your shield then you're pretty much useless because if you peek against like a cannon or a scorp hover then your guns are gone before you even uh, get to press the button. So, here is how you counter it. First of all, know that the Helios' range is about, about 200 meters I think. From here I hit it and from somewhere here I should not be able to hit it anymore, yeah. Somewhere in here is the spot. So if you're playing against the Helios with uh, something ranged, whatever ranged weapon you have, then what you want to do is you want to force the Helios out in the open where they come out after you, they shoot, they put the shield on and then if their shield goes off then they realize oh shit they have nowhere to go. They have to reverse out somewhere, they try to let, let's say reach this corner and during that time you have a clear shot at their guns. So this is what you need to do against the Helios hovers. Force them out in the open so that they can't go and hide. I have just seen so many people who just chase after a Helios hover and that's their strength. Their strength is close quarter combat. They cloak, they uh, charge their shield and then they come at you again. For example, on this map, I have seen so many stupid people doing stupid things. I'm not gonna name any names, but some of them uh, have been and still are in, uh, in the same clan as I'm in. They just don't understand the concept of a Helios Hover. So, the enemy team had two Helios Hovers. They, they had like two melees and two Helios Hovers. We killed the melees, then it was just me and one other guy left. And that other guy, he goes in there against two Helios hovers. He goes right in this corner in here. He sits in there and probably he thinks that the Helios hovers, they can't shoot him from the hill. But what they do instead, they come around from here. The Helios hovers, they uh, cloak in, they come from here. They shoot, they put the shield on, they do damage. I maybe take one shot from them from there because I was somewhere in there. And then he gets up by taking just one shot and the Helios Hover is gone and my teammate he took a significant damage and he's almost burning so what you need to do against the Helios Hover is go here and also one other guy he started chasing one of the burning Helios Hovers around there then the other Helios Hover he jumped down from there he went behind the rock I'm here and then he's screaming help 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 like how do you expect me to help you through the rock? Like, why do you even go there? They have two Helios hovers. If you stand right here with cannons, we both had cannons, then there is no chance a Helios hover can beat you. They have to come somewhere. Where is the range? 200 meters. Yeah, see, that's the, where the range is. They have to come all the way down here, and you can also hide behind here. Which means they have to come like somewhere there or somewhere there. Then they are forced out in the open. As soon as they pop the shield, you both shoot at them. Then the shield goes down and you can also do one free shot at them. And this is how you counter the Helios hovers. But a lot of people, they just don't get it. They see, oh, but this cabin is burning. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. And then it's, oh no, there is another one in my back and then you're dead, boom, match lost. So, know how to counter the build and know how to play your own build. I can't bother changing the build right now, but this is also a very good counter place against the melees. If you have melees, you go against the wall in here. Yeah, against the Helios, you keep distance. Against the melees, 
you stay right under here. If they try to jump over you, you most likely see them and you can take a really good whack at them. That again depends what guns you have. Depending on the, you know, the map and stuff, you was able to climb against the melees, but now you can't, so it, you know, it's this and that. I mean, you can still climb up here with the hovers and stuff. Like, if the melee attacks you, you can, like, jump over these things in here with a hover. Or with a spider build, you should really go, like, under there or somewhere where you're safe from, the, you know, the melees. And they can't just, you know, backstab you instantly. So, another really good tactic which I wanted to show you is against the melees. If you're with spiders against the melees, this is usually what we play. We try to get uh, as many melees as opponents as possible. There is kind of a trick, but I would rather not say how, but uh, anyway, this is one thing I leave out. Maybe I'll post it on a Patreon. But anyway, if you're playing against the melees with spiders, like one of the things that one specific player keeps doing it, he keeps going down there against the melees, and then the melees have literally like three or four ways to ram him. So he goes somewhere in here, he sees a melee, oh there's a melee, he starts shooting and the other one rams him in the ass and he's dead. One middle, I'm coming to you, is the bulk. I can't, this fucking melee is uh, trying to get me man. Yeah, we have a cup gun. He don't have spark. Two behind me. From the sp oh, come then. I don't know why you're going down there again. Yeah, right. Or he gets pushed down somewhere in there, and then the others can't help him. So if you're playing against the melees, stay up on a mountain. Like I usually stay somewhere in here, which means the melees can only come from here. And if you have typhoons, well, yeah, with typhoons you can do it. Then the melee comes up, you shoot once, you stun the melee, and most likely he's gonna be driving against, you know, here. Maybe he uh, reaches here. And then if you're really good, you stun him again, and he flies right off the edge. Or if he doesn't, you can give him a small notch, and he goes, you know, down the hill. So this is a really good tactic against the melees, always stay at the higher ground. Oh my god, again. Wait, uh, you disconnected? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck, it's the... It... Yeah. Fuck down. Why the... <laughs> get the fuck down, go, get down. What the Next fuck? One. Next. We're <laughs> going to tree. <laughs> Next one! Oh no, and I can't see that. What happened to him? What happened to him? He just broke in half! Also same against like other builds. Like stay up on the, you know, the edge. If the enemy is coming from there, you can shoot this entire way. But if the enemy is somewhere down there, I don't think he can even shoot up on the hill. Let's see. Let me see. The aim angles. Yeah, see, if you have enemies in here, see, I can't even aim that high, and this is also what people don't understand. Higher ground is tactical advantage. Look where I have to go in order to shoot, if enemies on top of the hill. From here, I can shoot, but only with one gun. But if you're up on the hill, you only have to peek your guns over the hill, and you can already shoot. See, I have, like, entire field open from here. And I can shoot anywhere from here. But if the enemy is somewhere down there, they can't even shoot me. So it's just free shots. And if the enemy goes like behind here and he goes like somewhere away, then just let them go. Don't chase after them because uh, as a result, someone is going to get you from behind and then you're dead. Another thing when going against the melee with a spider bill, such as like a typhoon spider or tsunamis. Well, typhoons are better. But if the melee attacks you and does the initial hit, then a lot of people, they always try to turn their cannons like this in their face and just keep slamming them like this. But what you do is you take one shot and then you turn yourself sideways and let the melee grind your legs. The damage is most likely gonna be split across three legs, which means that takes the melee a very, very long time to get through your legs. And once you're ready, like go like backwards like this, like so, 
and you constantly like turn like that and try to keep the melee on the side when your cannons are charged you turn you slam and you turn again and it's like kind of like I kind of count it in my head like how long it takes to you know grind through the legs so I try to like turn both sides so the damage is like split across you know the sides and if I still have the meat grinder you can use the meat grinder to uh, manipulate them a little bit like this see you can push them a little bit or you can push them from the other side and sometimes if you get it right in the front of the melee like so and push like that you turn them sideways and then instead of them pushing you, you're gonna be pushing them like this from the side and it's gonna be almost impossible for them to uh, gain control again so you can basically just grind them to death with a meat grinder I have demonstrated this on many many clan wars videos so I'm gonna try to uh, show you a clip how it's done Oh fuck me, there's another one. You can, you can push him down. Okay. Get the fuck Fine. down. <laughs> <laughs> what the? What the fuck? <laughs> what? He's not giving up. Get the fuck down. <laughs> what was go. that? Oh shit. You wanna go, go, go hug your friend? I think he's feeling lonely down there. Come here. Get the fuck down! <laughs> See the gap gun right here. No, I'm dead. Oh shit! Shit! Get gap gun, maybe no. He has no spark, but... One, one spark on the cap. He's fucking partnering with this guy. Keep low. Where is... Oh, shit. Uh, he will be on cap. <clears throat> What is this this broken garbage in me in here? Yeah, I got two on me now. Nice, 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 you clipped him. I'm fine with these two. Okay, now I lost my meat grinder, now I might need help in here. Maybe not. No, no, it's fine. Oh shit, one, two. Oh. No, Captain, he's pretty good, this one. I mean, a pretty good shit. Oh, I'm gonna die. Come on, Doro. Oh, for fuck's sake. No. I can't move. Nice. Oh my god. And the second sub part of tactics is uh, so called generic tactics against the enemies. A lot of people like think that there is only one way to win. But the tactics uh, are done based on what the enemy team does. If the enemy team is just camping in the base, then obviously you can't camp because then it's gonna just be a draw. Or can you? That depends on your builds and compositions. For example, if you have this kind of a hover team that pu uh, can push in and the others have like, let's say, some heavy builds, then it's very easy to push against them. You just look on the map, you take like the control of the map, like uh, two players here and one here and one maybe here, and the enemies are coming from all over here, and then you have the control of this entire area, and you can just peek and shoot from every angle. On this specific map, I chose this because uh, this is like uh, 
kind of technical map I'd say so you uh, you can go left side if you have fast builds if the enemy has slower builds or same uh, type of builds you can reach here before they uh, reach in the middle so you can usually get here but that depends on your uh, build if you can shoot over the hill like so or if you can't with uh, these kind of builds where the weapons are on top this is very good and it also brings me to one thing the tsunami and typhoon hovers that have the you know the cannon placement one is like below and one is, is on top on this kind of position you are in absolute disadvantage because you can only shoot one gun barely over the hill like so you can uh, shoot like one gun but the other one is a lot lower which means you need to go somewhere in here and expose your entire build and well obviously you're gonna probably get shot at so if the enemy is coming from there they obviously can't push from here because you and your teammate like will shoot them from here and the other teammates maybe they're there or this is actually not a good idea to split up but again, like I said, it uh, based on what the enemy does. You constantly have to look on the map, which also brings me to small thing on the minimap. See the minimap size, for example. You can go into your uh, settings, and where was it? I believe it's an interface. There you go. Minimap size large. Minimap marker size large. Minimap scale. That's what it is. Make sure that it's as small as possible, which is one. See, you can change the minimap, make sure it's it's all the way zoomed out like so, so you can see as much as possible, so you don't have to open the map just to see where the enemy is. So this is another thing that most people don't actually know. So it's very important to have it, make sure it's uh, large like this. The marker size doesn't really matter, but it's just easier to see. And once the enemy is like on this side, and if they're also land builds, then you can use a porcupine build if you have one to just pork on top of them so that's pretty much a dead trap if you have a porcupine in your team and the enemy is like land builds and they are like under here then they pretty much stand zero chance so in any case i have explained higher ground is always better so if the enemy goes in here in this position you have uh, two choices the enemy either tries to push you takes a lot of damage however if you fall back too much then the enemy will hi have higher ground and that's not good at all so at all costs try to take this side if possible then if the enemy falls back because from here you have the higher ground the enemy can fall back into the gap then you can jump down from here and once again you have the higher ground and you're behind the enemy but if the enemy does something I don't know where they don't even go there maybe they go like all the way from there then they stay really close in here and try to push you from behind then obviously you have to you know counter that you can try to go behind them try to shoot from here if you're in the enemy team you might put one fast uh, hover build somewhere you know behind there who is shooting across this entire um, area from here we have had a couple of losses because some enemy goes like somewhere in here and then he just snipes us in the back from here that depends again on the builds and how we do it sometimes we put one player in here but then again if the enemy has a melee player then you can't put the hover in here because the hover is defenseless against the melees so like i said it's uh, highly depends on what kind of builds uh, the enemy has and what do they do so keep your eye always on the map and that's also why the radar detector is very very important to have yeah, they are here, they are in front of okay, me. Okay, they are going right, so yeah, we can't go in there. Yeah, but this time everyone stay close to the edge. The mistake you made is that you went so far away that they were able to shoot on your head. Oh, fuck. What, you, you got shot in the back? Behind, behind. Yeah, we need to take this edge, Doric, you're alone, you're alone. Yeah. That's still good. Okay, watch out. <clears throat> I'm falling to uh, Torquin here. Yes, yeah. He lost his shield, so let's shoot him now. If he can. Oh, coming left. Yeah, I know. Don't there's two behind. The yeah, there's three behind now. We need to push the edge and jump down. If can. And focus the radius. We need to kill this one first. Oh shit. 
fucked. It's fine. No, it's not fine. I can't fucking unclip you. Come back, Torik. What are you doing? Helios is very low, but yeah, now I'm gonna die in here. I'm taking shots from all of them. Yeah, I lost the gun and then 500 only. The Helios is gonna, they're all coming back. I still have a detector down. Yes, please. Don't forget we can take the left edge in here. Uh, Crete, they're gonna go cap. Yeah, two of them are heavily damaged. We can't let them cap though. Yeah, the fucks are gonna cap, man. I can't go in there, I'm gonna die if I go. Yeah, they fucking cut to one man. You have to kill them or counter cap. And I'm cap can fuck me. Go left, uh, Dread. Got one. Ah, oh, shh! Fucking help! One is in front of me. One's burning, nice. Yep, cannot on top. Where's the last one though? Oh. One is here, but... Go right, Turkey. Go I, right. I All the way right. Flank him. Flank him. The, the yeah, go get him. Go get him. Oh, fuck me. Dead. We'll get him. We'll get him. We'll get him. Yeah. We'll get him. Got this again. Yeah, trade is on him. Should be dead. Was lucky to find the other one. I'm cap -canned. Nice job. Nice. That was pretty tough, actually. And I also wanted to uh, bring this uh, map up again, this breach map. On this map, it's extremely important to know that uh, usually the team who pushes will lose. Because there is just no way to defend yourself if you're pushing in. Like, if you're pushing over the breach, then you're just out in the open and you can just, like, shoot from here. I mean, the enemy if they come over the bridge then they are absolutely out in the open you can have two teammates in here and two on the other hill but again it depends on the weapons for example if the enemy has like uh, short range weapons or melees then obviously they can't take any shots at you also helios hovers they can't do much at all but then again even if they are helios hovers they are out in the open and they just can't defend themselves against uh, long range uh, builds so you have to know your build and know how to play against uh, certain, you know, builds. And if they go under the bridge, they have some cover in there, as you can see from here. But if you have like neutrino scope or if you're a really good shot, you can take shots through these trees in here and you can still hit them. Or between the posts, like you can still hit the enemies right there between the posts. And as you can see from here, I have pretty clear, you know, shooting angle. The pills are not big enough to uh, hide behind one post. They are poking out from one side or another. Which means if they go there, only place safe enough is behind that ship right there. And that's big enough maybe for two players max. And once again, if your team has a porcupine build and they have land builds or even with hovers or anything... You can uh, screw the porcupines down right from here, just spam this entire area and they are pretty much stuck under the bridge. And while the porcupine is throwing the porcupines, 
then one of the players with a hover, if you have a hover, actually with a spider also, you can go on the bridge, which means the enemy is completely stuck. They can't go back and they can't go forward. If they come out, then you have pretty good aim angles. Not, not really good, but pretty good. See, if they go anywhere there, you can already shoot them in the back. And same way, if they want to go back, then again, you're going to just shoot them in the back. So that's how it works. So if you put yourself in a bad position, then the match is pretty much decided. So on this map, yeah, very difficult to push against the enemy. You can go a little bit under the bridge and then try to cloak and go in. But again, like I said, it highly depends on uh, what kind of builds you have. So in other words, you also need to know the maps and you need to know where you can hide, where you can't hide, which places are good, which places are bad. In what I hit him again. I don't know how he ha he's not degunned. He's still that, but not degunned. Okay, I'm on the Reaper. In support. Nice. Yeah, the scorps. The scorps have been dead, but so am I, because the scorps are pushing and no one's shooting them. I am. Maybe we can ki uh, kill that Reaper. He's very angry now. How is this? I, I don't get it, man. This guy is not degunned. Just be yeah. careful, be careful. I am. I'm What's that pushing? Is that the Reaper? Easy That's no, a scorp. scorp. So he goes degunned. Fall back. We need to kill that skull. There are two coming up right now. One cloaked. One not cloaked. Nice. Maybe we can get this one. Come on. That was close, man. <laughs> it's very close. They're going in the water. We're yeah. yeah. Might be able to take the bridge. On the, on the left ramp. On the left of the bridge. They have no aim, they have no brains, that's just easy match. Yeah, stay here, Falcon. Okay, maybe not. Oh, fucking yeah, lucky fuck. Uh, go, go, go on top of the hill and shoot them from there. I'm just waiting for my seals. You don't need a stun. You can shoot them from the top. And I'll just stay here and make sure that they don't get in here yeah these guys are already lost it's like example of really bad tactics <laughs> you are what you doing <laughs> one is cloaked by the way watch out. okay now those are all, all three focusing <laughs> me uh. oh shit one is pushing the R uh, why are there oh no my. porcupines, dude? <laughs> Doriko? Uh, yeah. Burning? I think you can come here, Doriko. <coughs> Those took hard. I mean, I know it's a choke, but still you could uh, porcupine a little bit. Yeah, that camp is uh, burning. Oh, okay, that was a nice shot, Yar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go back to my place. Oh, what, what the hell? Eh? What are you doing? It, it, it missed. <laughs> eh? What, what? It missed. What? What are they doing? They're on top of each other in there. I don't understand what they're doing. Just staying <laughs> like a rabbit uh, behind the bridge. <laughs> and, wait, and waiting for being hunted. I don't understand. Just hide uh, behind the not, post. Do not fall, do not, do not fall, please. Oh, they are in trouble. He's hiding behind the post. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's ridiculous, seriously. What is this noise? Ah, oh, sorry. What the fuck is that? It's a plane. 
We have planes now. He's still sitting in there. His team is dead and he's still sitting. I can't see shit. I'm in a tree, man. Uh, the other one is on the river. There is no other one. Hold That's on. the last Hold one. On. Oh! Yes. Okay, let's jump. And go fuck off. Oh, he's oh. dead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what a place to jump. <laughs> Then you can put your fuel tank on and get some fuel. <coughs> was it spiders or did they have any yeah, bombers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they were all spiders. And it was uh, humpbacks. Most of them. One icebox. And oh, they, all, they have a mandrake. Yeah, they have a uh, mandrake. Yeah, but they're all lined up and they're up there. Yeah. I don't know where they are going. It's trying to go to the bridge, I think. Yeah. Doing really good damage. Yeah, so am I. Like 2,000 something, they're just going. Let them go to the bridge, then fuck it. Let them sit there if they want. <laughs> but it's the bridge. We all want the bridge. I don't want the bridge. Fuck the bridge. No matter how much damage we take, we all want the bridge. Oh, he's gonna die, <laughs> Crusher. I know what I'm doing, I'm putting myself in a bad position in here. <laughs> Just press. Oh my god. I don't know what they're doing, man. <laughs> it's a real push team. Yeah, but they're pushing the wrong place. <laughs> they're pushing each other. <laughs> okay, now I oh, got they, you. Now they're going back, okay. <laughs> I'm YOLOing closer, man. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Uh, watch out, they're gonna go on the right side. Uh, Cloud, you can push up to me, I think. Oh, there's the pork man, right? You're afraid of him? I'm not. No, just the fact that his bow is a lot stronger <laughs> than mine. They are also oh. shooting at each other, by the way. Okay, I'll come up. This looks fun. Okay, I'm gonna... Uh, might die in here. And actually, no, one is burning. Yep, he's dead. Pork is pushing me now. Ow. That's fine. Yeah, this match is a perfect example of bad tactics and bad positioning. That was ridiculous. I think they're gonna try to cap this time. Oh, one is right here. Under. Start the clothing. Start the clothing. Here. Oh fuck. No, no, don't push me down, Cloud. Oh. I know if they're. Oh, they're all, all down or? I think the rest are coming up now. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, fuck you're man, I... You're blocking me! I'm not blocking you, he's coming from behind. <laughs> yeah, I know! <laughs> he was blocking me, man. Oh, shit. No, nice. cap fast. Our cap. I can't fly. Well, actually, actually, you can split up. <coughs> no, we need to kill him. I still have a detector, so... But what did he have? That's the question. Yeah, he left. He left the cap. I don't know where he's going to.
He's very close. My cap in charged. There he is. Yeah, he's in the middle. Went back to our cap. We have three minutes, man. We're gonna get him. But I can't shoot properly. I can. I think he has no detector, so... He's coming to you, I think. Ah, oh, fuck me, I missed him. He's coming for me, shit! Nice, I got his spark out. Pew, man, we fucking won against the melees with hovers. Are you shitting me? He's coming, I think. No, he's not. I know what he's doing. Cloak and go, maybe. Maybe you can get it. Ah. He's gonna try to get you. <laughs> Thank you for stupid people. You're just... Oh, well, that has to be in the next video. Dirk, you go from the other side. Why are you following me again? Go in now. I'm not following you. Okay, I can get I can get away, I think. Look out for the park. If you stay in the cap, I can shoot them. Turkey, okay. Turkey, Turkey, go, go away from okay, there. Okay, okay. I'm stunned. It's not gonna be a sudden death. We cap to one point and then you instantly leave the cap and we win. Yeah. One is cloaked. I don't have a detector, uh, Oculus or cloak anymore. One is cloaked somewhere near me. Okay, we win. Nice. <laughs> Suckers. They made points and the other team made points so they can leave without the... Ah, oh, so the second one I don't. I don't leave. think you can leave because Toriko got banned in second one. I think you have to self-destruct. Yeah. All spiders. Yeah. Well, now you're just spitballing here. Yeah, come on, Setio, stop talking could, to you. Could, come on with something. Come up with yeah. something good. <laughs> and take to the... Well, you should definitely get banned if you self-destruct without doing any damage. Or taking any damage, because that just means griefing. I only see one hiding in the cave. One for Zen on the... Uh, guys, don't fight them in the cave, because Cloud can't hit them in there. Force them to come out. They're all in, uh, in the cave. Yeah. At the beginning. We could They're take the gap on side. Cover. Are they stupid? No, they're protecting from uh, just, the Mandrake. Don't, 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 don't take too many shots. And if you take shots, they are, 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 guns. They are, are, they are coming out. Yep. That's fine. Let them, let them peek around. Okay. You got stunned. Ozzy. I don't know what the hell they're doing. The That's first thing is smart. They're just now they're there. just being stupid. If they push the cave, it's done. <laughs> they are pushing the cave. Push the cave, guys. Push the cave. Yeah. I'm doing so much damage from here. Now my brother joins me in here. Good stunt. There's one more man, bro. He's cloaked. Where? Somewhere in there. I don't there know he, if they think the cab is. is behind us or something. Now they're, they're going, going through uh, the cave. Yeah. So yeah, two, two is in the cave. At least two. Come back to me, Zorigo, if you can. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> don't, don't, don't die to them, please. Come on. Yeah. I have done so much damage to these guys. Yeah, me as well. <laughs> Time right, to turn around. Time turn to turn around. Yeah. I'll call, uh, come behind you, Matt, bro. One down. This guy, yeah, he's down. Two down. <laughs> this is like thorough here. <laughs> what is he doing now? What's this then? <laughs> Kissing contest. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> That's interesting gameplay for <laughs> for Spectre. <laughs> interesting, more like stupid. Look yeah. at their scores. Mm, I think uh, no, no left? Yeah, let's go left. But they might fucking cap then. 
Nein, ich stehe bis Rack vor dem Sicht. Ich habe Bock, oh, Fortune? No Bock. Ja, es ist ein Bock mit zwei Capcans. Torik, du musst wirklich die Capcans repainten. Warum? Sie fucking stick out like so easily. You need to paint them like Solomon's pattern or something like this. No, the, no, the camouflage color is better. They can't see it then. Then it's good for all maps. Oh my god, he took a heavy hit, man. I think he lost the scoreboard already. He <laughs> got his, his, his stealth. <laughs> These guys are like retards, man. Ow. I can't face three scorps at once, man. They will yeah, be one guy coming to your right. <coughs> Maybe he's gonna jump over and get killed by me. Maybe. He's on the ledge. He's on the ledge. He's, he's itching to come over. They have no he's detectors. Those retards have no detectors, man. I swear they have no detectors. He was itching. He's gone back again now. Three are cloaked, by the way. They might come up here. Watch out. Now there's two of them are on the ledge. Turkey, you should let them come. You should go away, Turkey. Pork is on the because thing. When they do, then I'm going to kill them. Yeah, you should let you should come away, uh, Turkey. So when they come over, I can. Uh, one is T-gun. One Scorp is T-gun. Nice. I think uh, one people use one Scorp. I don't know. One is cloaked. He's coming to my left. Just stay your ground, man. These guys are horrible. They play so horrible. Now, one is coming to the ledge. We got one is in the cap. He lost the scorp. He lo no, he didn't lose the scorp. Yeah, Bork oh, is oh, here. Oh, oh, oh. Let me get on the right. They are heavily damaged. We can easily do it. Yeah, but. Matt one broke dead. One, yeah. There's the one with no weapons. Wait, don't... Doric, is no, for, for, yeah, I know he's pull. here. There is also a Capcan in here and he's gonna fucking Capcan me, man. Dirk, you need to take care of the other Scorp. Uh, I'm uh, under now, I'm waiting them. Okay, I see. I'm shooting at the pork right now. Man, you can go cap. Go cap. Oh fuck. Yeah. Ah shit, I can't okay, help you. I'll man. go cap then. <laughs> ah shit, Turkey is in trouble now. I'm coming, Turkey, I'm coming, but it's it's okay, Matt broken cap. Well we already winning anyway, we already killed uh, he lose one scorp and porcupine lose. Okay, I'm captain. Uh, Fuck. Porcupine lose some pork. The enemy is coming back for me. Tell me. Going to say pork is almost dead. Yeah, he's almost dead. Who's chasing? Who's coming to the cap? Scorp. Scorp. Down? Scorp. The pork is dead. Can I kill him? If you want to. Uh, where, where is this guy? No head pork. What? You no head pork. The, yeah. bo the bork is dead. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I'm out of ammo. Shh. Yeah, because you spammed I'm going, too much. I'm going to cap, so... Just survive. Just survive. Do one cap on mad. Yeah, but they can't do anything. We got the point, so... This is a perfect example how not to play Scorps, man. This is so horrible. One of their builds, I think he uses normal parts to mount the Scorps. I can't hit him, so... I'll run away. I can. There we go. That was super easy, man. Come, come here, everyone. Right here. This is perfect. For you, not for me. We push right, we push, uh, we take the bridge. At least me and Turkey. One is cloaked here, Turkey. 
I'm here. Yeah, Turkey, where the fuck are you? Nice, nice, nice. But I'm very damaged now. Yeah, we push behind them and then Tori. I, I got the hover, I got the cricket down. We're coming, on, we're coming, we're coming. Come to the cap, come to the cap, quickly. I got the cricket down. Anyway, the cricket spots. Shoot the spider. Tur uh, Turkey could go on the cap, the, the harvester can't do shit to you. No. He's focusing me, he knows I'm low. Uh, watch out, Melee's coming, Melee's coming. Yeah, Melee's coming to you guys. He's coming to me, he's coming here, he's here, he's here. Oh, he's a hover. No, he's here. Yeah, I knew okay. it. Yeah. He's fucked, he's fucked. Turkey, Turkey, behind you. Yeah, he got my gun off. You need to shoot that fucker. I'm one shot, he's gonna get me. Or not. Look at Turkey, look at Turkey mopping up. He's he's focusing me. Yeah. He nice really shot. Really nice shot. Footage. Just stay there. He has to come down to you guys. Yeah. He had he lost the gun. He lost the gun. This was exactly how I saw it happen. That me and Turkey we pushed them from behind, and then you and Toriko can go from front. Pulsar is behind you, man. In your Where ass. Where the fuck is he? Behind. Told you. Yep. I, I fucking knew it. You he's gonna kill us. No, I, I was like, he was like cloaking, yeah? And I was thinking, oh, he's going for undead. <coughs> so I follow undead and he was behind me. Okay, well, undead is about to die. Okay, this guy wants to throw the game. This guy actually threw the game. Come on, survive. What? This was so stupid. Well guys, this is all I could think of for now. I hope this is enough. This has been uh, long enough already, but if you can think of anything else, then leave it in the comments and I'm gonna try to make part two. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and please do consider again supporting me on Patreon. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see ya next time.